Hello there and welcome to The Only One, your one-stop shop for number one comic reviews. I'm back today in bite-sized form because, well, I've read a lot of stuff over the past few days uh, and weeks and I'm really falling behind on stuff. So I, I need to condense these and somehow have them, um, you know, be able to come out with them um, on, a, on a faster pace. So I'm here to tell you about a beautiful, beautiful book. And I'm not going to go into spoilers as much as possible with this one. And it is the Grand Morrison pen and Liam Sharp penciled um, The Green Lantern Intergalactic Lawman number one that just debuted, uh, I think, last week, like last Wednesday or something. And it is a great start. This is like right. There's, there's no qualms about this being a recommend. I loved almost every page of it, almost every panel of it, um, you know, right off the bat, this book feels great. And I really do mean that it feels great. There's quality here in these pages. There's quality in the material that um, Sharp's artwork is, is printed on. It feels like something that is worth the uh, $5, or in my case, uh, $6 and change, because that's, that's what you get for Romania. So this is um, a bit of a reboot. I've heard chatter about there being some discrepancy between, um, you know, some bits of the story here and what we've gotten before with um, the Green Lantern. Now, coming from my normal normie perspective, I haven't followed the latest Green Lantern series, so I can only pass judgment on this one. And I have several things to say. Starting with the cover that is, uh, has had people uh, talking about Hal Jordan looking weird. Listen, the first time I saw it, I was like, all right, there's something off about his biceps. But like that, that was what drew my attention. But then I remembered um, Chris Hemsworth's uh, Thor training regimen and the muscles on his muscles. And I was like, no, you know what? It's, it's cool. It looks fine. So... There are a few panels where, you know, people have said that Hal looks weird and that, you know, Liam Sharp's art doesn't exactly capture um, capture him as, as well as it could, but I had nothing to, um, to complain about in that department. I also need to touch upon the eclectic art. It's very loud. Um, this is... As the title says, it's an intergalactic adventure, and the Lantern Corps does that, right? It jumps from planet to planet and system to system, and it deals with uh, a lot of alien species and a lot of um, a lot of uh, environments, and it has to come across as this exotic, uh, otherworldly adventure, and it does. The artwork does that so well. It is just this... Uh, this this fun, loud, uh, colorful, colorful, uh, colorful um, collection of just mind-bending concepts and, and crazy backgrounds and explosions and uh, p pirate spiders getting sick. It's you know it's it's insane. It's cheesy. I'm not debating the fact that oh there is there is there is cheese here. Uh, enough to satisfy like half of France, but it is it is the good kind of cheese. Like it doesn't devolve into uh, cringeworthy, at least for me. Second thing I want to say, we get uh, I think four or five lanterns that uh, we actually uh, that actually get to speak uh, in this comic, and each of them has their own voice. Like Hal has his way of talking, and Hal's jokes are on point as few as they are they are on point so i appreciate that uh we have what's this guy's name uh maxim tox right so it's the um lantern that opens the um uh, the book is also uh has his own style and his own um his own voice and then uh we have um chrysalon which is this crystal based organism that looks really cool and has this uh, stoic demeanor, right? Uh, so again, everybody talks 
in their particular way. Everybody has their own their own voice, their own sound, their own demeanor, and I think that that is a great thing to do, even with the few panels and few dialogue lines that all of these uh, characters get. Now, there's a bit of a, you know, round up the, uh, the villains du jour plot going on, and uh, Hal manages to um, to uh, bring them in and he goes to uh, New Oa apparently after a time and the hook is not only uh, a, a traitor angle that uh, is very heavy because of where the traitor appears and who it actually is well apparently the uh, the guardians know who the traitor is we're gonna find out um, but also because there's this panel, and I am going to spoil it, uh, at least half of it, but there, there might be a link between this comic and the ongoing Doomsday Clock uh, series, which is, I think, a 12-issue series? Uh, I, I, hope, I hope it's a 12-issue series. It makes sense, uh, after all. So it might link into that, which is very exciting, and it might have some great repercussions for the uh, the DC comic universe going forward. Now, another thing that is really, really great is that within the span of like three pages, there is so much uh, world and lore building done. And if you know me and you know what I've written before, you know I love world building, and this is done in such a, a, a clear and pointed manner and it goes through uh, it goes through what the Lantern Corps is it goes through who its members are and what they do and this is just just two pages that's all you need if you've never learned about the Lanterns before and it actually expands on what we've gotten so far so just top marks all around. Grant Morrison knows his shit. I know there's been uh, talk about him going uh, off the reservation on things that he hasn't created himself, that he may turn, let's call it kooky, I guess, at times, but uh, there is nothing here to deter me from from following this series through. There's actually a, a coming soon um, a spread that has some 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 interesting uh, depictions here which I'm not going to spoil for you. What else is there to say? The artwork feels it also feels a little old-timey. It feels it's it's almost a, a classic vein uh look which I'm I'm all on board with. Again, it it looks like it's from a completely different universe yet it retains some familiarity especially in the uh, Hal on Earth uh, uh, scenes and and uh, his interactions with his uh, current girl bleh, girlfriend, but yeah, no, this uh, this is this was an amazing first issue. This is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of um, of this series. I found something that hooked me on every level: uh, artwork, storyline, dialogue. The cover is cool. There are some, um, some, some neat set pieces in here that really work. Uh, just everything clicks on on all levels for me, and it was just a, a beautiful experience that I'm really happy to be following now going forward. So that's my take on the Green Lantern Intergalactic Lawman Number One by Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp. Thank you for listening to my short little thing rant style stuff and I'll definitely have more of these up uh, as soon as possible I actually have another comic that I'm very excited about and I will have that one up next I also have to talk about the solo uh, Imperial Cadet series and a couple others but uh, yeah again thanks for uh, thanks for following along Follow us on Facebook. That's where I spend most of my um, most of my times with uh, Gung Ho Geeks. Drop by the website, see what we have up there, and have as nice a day as you deserve.